Hey, WayFam, thank you for joining us for our sermon. We believe that God's word will make an impact on your life. Let's tune in. Wow, awesome. Welcome to session three. Give your neighbor a high five and let them know it's so good to see them. How many has been with us for the last three sessions? Wow, look at all. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good job. I didn't get to see all the hands earlier. How many are here for the first time today? You've never been with us. First time today. Wow. Can you give all of our first time guests a round of applause? Thanks for coming. My name is Pastor Robert. I got my beautiful wife, Veronica, with me. Hi, sweetie. Want to say hi to everybody? Yes. Hello. Good morning. We could kiss. We're talking about marriage today. Singles, turn your, turn your face or whatever. <laughs> We're talking about marriage, but it is so good to see you guys. And um, our senior pastor, my brother, Pastor Marco, he's in South Africa. Pastor Marco is in South Africa with his daughter, Allegra. Um, they're at a leadership pastor's conference. Um, how many remember Bill Weiss, the guy that spent 23 minutes in hell? He comes, I think, every year here, and he minutes, he's been begging Pastor Marco to go. And um, it, it was finally, the, I think, the timing. How many know that God's timing is perfect? It's perfect. I don't know where you're at right now in your life. I think Kurt said it earlier. Maybe you're kind of on your last leg of a relationship. We serve a God that can restore anything. So we speak healing right now in this atmosphere. And honey, can you pray just a healing right now over this atmosphere? But even before we start, pray for a healing right now in this atmosphere. Heavenly Father, we thank come you, before Jesus. you, Lord, and yes, we just Lord. thank you, Lord, that each thank and every you, person Father. here comes with yes. hearts open, Lord, ready to receive from you. Touch every person. Lord, God. everybody that's come in with a broken heart, Lord, I yes. pray, Lord, that you will touch their hearts, Lord, that you will heal them yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. We thank you for your healing. Yes. Man, we're in a beautiful place today, and I think I wanted to ask some questions. Are you okay with questions? I know you don't like, I don't like it either. You want to answer some questions? You Are like you okay? It. I don't like it. You don't but, like it? Okay, we'll ask some questions her blood pressure we'll... goes high when she's like nervous <laughs> and right now she's like burning up you too chris you're like that too oh you're saying her oh she's got yeah, like this you have questions Mondo? we'll answer a few you want to do it let's do it you can you, you ready yes i'm ready let's do it bring them on Mondo. all let's... right all right let's go back here where's yvonne and antonio's back here yvonne and antonio. antonio that's my middle name that's a good there name you go. antonio antonio go ahead Buenos, buenos dias. Oh, in Espanol. He's going to do it in Spanish. He's going to do it in Mi Spanish. Mi Espanol es no mucho, mucho bueno. He's coming here in Spanish, ready to work on his marriage. And then his wife, Yvonne, is going to ask the same question in English. So oh, hallelujah. We have My a Spanish is bad. Here. Yo entiendo casi todo. Hablar es poquito difícil, pero estoy practicando. Mi es ne necesito practicar mi español. Pero es muy mal. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Okay, Mi nombre go. es Antonio Hernández. Mi pregunta es cómo hablar mejor con mi esposa. Oh, okay. So, um, hi, pastors. Hello. Um, oh, we we want and we need help with communication. Um, I always want everything my way, so we need help with that. Uh -oh. As do I. <laughs> She's being honest. She's being a honest. A lot. She wants her way a lot. <laughs> You're in the right place. You know what? Today we're going to be talking about communication. So yeah, you're in the right, we're going to talk about communication and what we're studying right now in the book, we're studying the five love languages. Yes. So today we're going to talk about the different forms, how we communicate with our spouse. So you're in the, we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, so we're, we're going to answer the so we'll full answer question in about two minutes or not two service. minutes, about 10 minutes. We want to answer that before any of you? Um, your... I guess communication. Um, I know that my husband actually has to correct me a lot of times on just the tone of my voice and even um, the appearance of my face as far as like when I'm saying something, um, you know, it should be not with a harsh looking face, not right. with a hard look. And then um, I have to be very, I, I feel like I'm just a very, um, I guess like a, a very direct person maybe. Very um, direct. So I have, to be, I have to be mindful of that and I have to watch how I say things, I guess, um, just in the verbal communication and then just my body language as well. And communication, if I could just add, I don't think we're gonna mention it later. Communication, a big part too, is just listening. Yes. The That's another form part. of communication, just listening, hearing them out. Want to say something, just kind of hold tight and hear them out. Because sometimes, how many know, we, we miscommunicate. We, we misdiagnose um, a problem. What's the word I'm looking for? Like you, 
What is it? I don't even know what I'm saying. I totally zoned out. It's conference weekend. I That's all right. Know. We got another question. We got another question. No problem. <laughs> Thank you, Antonio. Give Antonio a round of applause, his wife. Thank you. But we're going to go in more detail in about 10 minutes. Awesome. The proper way to communicate. Awesome. I'm here with Adrian and Jackie. Hey, what's up, Adrian and Jackie? Hi. Our question is, uh, how do you get over an argument when you're not seeing eye to eye? Oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Go ahead, sweetie. Answer it. <laughs> You guys got to see eye to eye, remember. I know, right. go ahead. Right, okay. How do, you get over an, how do you get over an argument? How do you get through it? How do you get over an argument when you're okay. not seeing eye to eye? Okay. Um, well, I, I think I mentioned it in the last service that um, there always has to be a mature one. Right. And in my home, Robert is the mature one. And he always, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> he always ends up seeing eye to eye to me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, but um, d really, there should be somebody that's going to finally just kind of give and say, okay, right. look, let me, hear your, let me hear your side, but I also want you to hear mine. Right. And so um, we actually, remember, remember I said the saga continues with the YMCA? Okay, yes. you guys want to hear the next story that oh I have? Oh my gosh, here we go. Okay, so it you didn't kinda, share that nine o'clock service. I know, but it kind of goes with the question. All right, go ahead. Okay, so um, we were driving home from the YMCA. We made it through. We were so excited. We're driving home, and he says something about some chicken that I had prepared um, a few days earlier in the refrigerator, and uh -oh. he had asked me about the chicken the day before, and he had asked me about the chicken the day before. So I, so I meal prepped a little bit, and so it's good for four days. So he asked me the same question for the 50th time within three days. And I don't know if he wanted a different answer. I don't, I don't know what it was, but he, he asked the question again. And we're driving home from the YMCA after a basketball game, and he asked me, are you gonna eat that chicken in the refrigerator? I said, I cannot eat that chicken in the refrigerator. I just had surgery in my mouth. I cannot eat anything hard she or stringy. She went off on me, she went off. Do you understand? And he looked at me, he's like, he looks back and he sees Noah has his ear pods on and he's like, Veronica, you are being really sharp. What's wrong with you? So, I could have lashed back, but I already knew, oh, here we are, again, right, right. So here it goes. So she was the mature one in this one. Here it goes. So I sat there for a minute, and I said, you know what, in a soft tone, can, can I tell you something? And he said, yeah. I said, every time you ask me the same question over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again, <laughs> This is bad. This is good. To me, it feels like you're not listening. Are any wives in the and same I boat think, a little bit? I think. Well, you got a lot of. I ladies. think a light bulb went on. He was like, like his eyes got bigger, like, oh, that was why she was sharp because I've asked her this question. That's right, I asked her. Yeah. He's like, okay. Okay, I get it. So, you know, we, we, somebody has to be the one that, right. if, if it's heated and it's loud, you have to be the one to, okay, That's right. let's bring this together. That's right. Let's talk civilized. That's right. I'll be the mature one. And that's it. She was a mature one in that argument. One more, Mondo. Because I don't know Pastor where this Robert. is headed. You're putting me in trouble. She's just, How's the weather? She's how's just the weather? blasting me. The, how's the weather going? I she didn't do this 9 o'clock service. What's up with that? I was to ask you how the weather was. Change that conversation. All right, go ahead, Mondo. Right, you're going to be in trouble. Singles perspective. Singles. Now, singles I love it. Where are my single folks at? Love all my right, singles. All the guys, are you guys looking around? Mark, are you looking around? Right? Mondo. Sorry, I'm trying to set him up. Are you trying to set up Mark in the front row? Stop. Go, go. Right, Get a right, question. Here. Chanel, <laughs> Chanel. This is getting out Chanel's of hand over got, here. Chanel's got an amazing question. Go ahead, question. Chanel. What Chanel. do you got for the singles? Okay. As a single, what are some boundaries singles should have for themselves while preparing for marriage? Boundaries. Number one, have a curfew. Have a curfew? Yeah. You got to put physical, put some boundaries, put a curfew. You're not going to be out past this time. How many know we're not, Pastor Marco mentioned last week, if, you're, if you got a couple, you're not going to be studying the Bible at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
<laughs> All right. Put the boundaries up. Put a time. Put a time. And this, I'm going to say this too. And you can answer too. Have some accountability partners. You could talk to Christian. We're, I don't know if he finished it. We were formulating a court and contract. How to court properly. How to date someone properly and put up the boundaries. Have some accountability partners, family, friends, leaders here to help you put up those boundaries. You want to add something to that? Um, I think most importantly, uh, your relationship with God. Nothing right. should compromise that relationship with God. That's it. That's it. If anything compromises the word of God, we don't do it. You got it? How many know we, we got to be obedient to the word of the Lord and what he's doing? His word. His word. His word has a final say so. Who has the final say so? Word. God's word has a final say so. If it comes against this, boundaries are set up by the word of God. That's the question because I'm getting in trouble up here with my wife. So that's it. You got it? You got another one, Molly? You're good? No, we're done. That's it. Let's continue. Now, let's continue today's lesson. Write this down. If you have a notepad, write this down. We're going to be talking about the five love languages. So it's going to answer some of your questions, sweetie, in the back about communication. The five love languages. And before we do that, um, I know we haven't discussed it the last two weeks, if we could. I want to discuss, Veronica, you could cover number one. What are the primary goals for a marriage? Why did God even institute marriage? I want to discuss that first so we can really get a perspective on why we even get married. Veronica, number one, what does the word say? And what's number one? Marriage was established by God to fulfill kingdom assignments. Assignments. Write that down. What's the purpose for marriage? What's the purpose for marriage? It's accomplish kingdom assignments. How do we know that? We look at the first, you look at the first couple chapters in the Bible, how God set it up with Adam and Eve. Look at Genesis 2.18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper. And you're an amazing helper. Who is just right for him. A helper? A helper for what? Well, you go down to Je Turn to page one, Genesis 1, Then God blessed him and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. It was to manage God's creation. That was the original purpose for marriage. Me and Veronica right now, it's bigger than us just having a good time, which we have an amazing time in our marriage. We have fun and we go out. Maybe we'll go on vacations or maybe we'll go to the movies, but it's not all about that. It's about a kingdom assignment getting accomplished. That's why the enemy is trying to attack us so hard. He's trying to stop your purpose. He's trying to stop the assignment over your life. For example, me and Veronica, our assignment right now, we're going to help Pastor Marco. We're going to help the team here build churches all across America. How many are with me on that? We are going to take the devil out of cities. We're going to turn prostitutes into women of God. We're going to turn guys that were just out of jail into men of God. And we're going to kick the devil out of cities. Look at your neighbor and tell them, we're on assignment. We're on assignment. That's why we get attacked. We're on assignment. Really quick for the singles. So God's going to send you someone yes. to help you with kingdom business, with kingdom assignments. That's right. If that person is not interested in kingdom assignments, if he's not interested or he doesn't understand, or I That's guess right. I'm saying he because I'm a woman. and right. so, But she. if he or she does not understand... The, and it's not even serving God. Right. What do you do with that person? You continue dating them? You can you continue dating them? Maybe it'll get better. No, it never gets better. Yeah, but I've been praying for him. Nope. Is he went to church with me once. He, he just got a job. Get rid of him. I told you she was hardcore. She was an Air Force man. She's hardcore. <laughs> because the enemy is trying to stop you from your assignment. Right. I don't know about you. I'm letting the devil know right now. He's not stopping the assignment over my life. He's not stopping the purpose over me and Veronica's life. And if you don't agree, what does the Bible say for a single? Here's a good single scripture. Amos 3.3. What does it say? It says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? If you're not in agreement, you can't walk together with them. 
So the first reason why God set up marriage was for kingdom assignments. Here's number two, to raise up godly children. One of the purposes for marriage is to raise up godly children. What's the scripture on that one, sweetie? Malachi 2.15 says, didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit, you are his. Yes. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. Wow, what does God want? Godly children. Wow, I love that. From your union. So guard your heart. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. I, I shared with the women yesterday, and I'll share with you guys. My daughter, she's playing volleyball here at Cajon High School. And um, she's on the freshman team there. And just recently, the coach had to, had to pick, um, you know, a team captain. And they chose Mariah to be the team captain. And I, and I told Mariah, I said, Mariah, you know, it's a big responsibility. You're going to be the leader of the team. And, and I, I told her, you know, you, you probably should pray before the games, hold a Bible study, do something. To take, it, take it further than even the sport. So just the other day, she prayed with the team for the first time right there at Cajon High School. <laughs> Some of the girls have given their life to Jesus Christ. Some of the girls now are coming to the Wayworld Outreach, and God is on the move. One of the purposes of marriage is to raise godly children. And maybe you're here right now, and maybe your child is not serving God. You have a teenager, you have a young adult, and they're not serving the Lord. You want them to serve God. And I love to do this. I just love to pray for people, too. And is there anybody like that? You're, you're a mom or a dad, and your teenager right now is not serving God. Can you slip your or hand up for a second? Or even kids. Or kids, they're not serving the Lord. children. Do you want to do something with me? I want to pray for your kids. Is that okay if me and Veronica pray for your kids? Can you stand up? Is it okay to stand up? Can you stand up? I don't want to put you, I don't want to put you on blast or nothing. I love to do this. I just love, I don't, I don't want to wait to the end of the service. We might forget to pray for this. I want to, can you stretch your hands towards all these families? Look at all these families. Their kids right now are not serving God. Selenia here, she's standing. This is our cousin. She just had a birthday yesterday. Just want to say happy birthday. Love yes, you. Yes, love you, sweetie. Your kid's going to serve the Lord. We pray right now, our children are going to serve God right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, we Lord. bind the enemy right now. We bind the yes. spiritual influence over our children. We bind the demonic strongholds over our kids. We come against the devil's plans right now. We are saying as far as me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. If the kids have moved out of the house and they're outside, they're coming back home. They're receiving Jesus Christ. And we're letting you, devil, you are defeated. Jesus defeated you on the cross. And we thank you right now. Our kids will serve the Lord. I declare it again. Our children will serve the Lord. If you believe that, give the Lord a big shout of praise this morning. Our kids will serve the Lord. Your kids are serving the Lord, Ron. Your kids are serving the Lord. Selene, not only serving the Lord, they're going to they're gonna be on fire for the Lord. Sorry, I just like to pray for some people, man, like that. I don't Go ahead, sweetie. What I, else we got? I just want to share this because you have it highlighted here yeah. in our notes. The enemy is, is after our marriage to get the real prize, and the real prize is our children. That's a good point. We didn't say that at 9 o'clock, huh? No. The enemy is after our marriage to get to the real prize. He's so if he could children. destroy our marriage, That's it. he can use that to destroy our children. That's right. So right now, again, we're just covering the whole purpose of marriage. Before we go into the love tank and how to fill it, that's all good. But I want you to know the purpose. Number one is for kingdom assignment. It's number one. Number two is to raise godly children. Now, I know families, we go through a lot of things. What are some of the top reasons for divorce? Why are people separating? The three top reasons for divorce, number one is infidelity. Number two is money. And number three is communication. Those are the top three reasons right now for divorce in America. Number one, infidelity. Maybe you're here today and you've went through this. Your husband um, cheated on you, your wife cheated on you, and there was infidelity in the marriage. I have good news, you guys. The Lord wants to forgive your spouse. He's already forgiven. We got to just forgive our spouse. He's already died on the cross. He could heal your husband. He could heal your wife. He could heal your marriage. We serve a God, and one of his names is the God of restoration. One of his 
God of restoration. If you're dealing with infidelity, you know, we're going to open up prayer in, in a little bit and let God just heal your marriage. Don't we serve a God that heals you guys? We serve a God of restoration. And, and just really quick, I, just real fast, I know money, we dealt with this when we first got married. Um, you want to go into that, what happened when we first got married really quick and then we'll go to the love tank? What happened with the money thing? Okay, when we so first got married, just really fir- fast. When we first got married, um, I was debt free. My car was paid off. I didn't have I didn't have any <laughs> debt, nothing, no credit cards, nothing. And um, Robert was not that way. Um, so we were married. We were already married. Now I was um, in his. Well, it was now our apartment, but I moved into his apartment. And um, the first time I ever got the mail. There was like stacks of like bills, and like there was red, red ones in there, and there were red and, ones. <laughs> Cause you know those are like the urgent ones, like okay, you're about to get disconnected, you gotta pay, you know. So um, I just was he. I thought he had never, he never learned how to pay a bill. That's what I thought. I know I was bad. I'm sorry. I'm forgiven. <laughs> Jesus forgave me already. I handle the bills now, but I, I just... Singles, I want to throw that out there. Singles, before you even think about marrying someone, number one, check their bank account. Number two, run their credit. She starts getting bills, $600, $700 car payment. Her car was already paid off. Student loan for $28,000. And I had graduated years after that. We're still paying on it. <laughs> she had to say that. You just, you just got her alive, nine o'clock service money. You just say, uh, you gotta know what you're getting yourself into. Don't be when you get married, all of a sudden, oh, I'm shocked, don't get shocked. I'm, if you gotta hire a private investigator, Find out what they're doing because you don't want to be shocked when you get married. How many married couples, when you got married, you were kind of shocked at a few things? Yeah, some of you guys want to raise it. Some of you guys are still shocked. Yeah, I understand. You know what? I also think that this also causes a divide just like when we keep our money separate. Ooh, talk about, okay. We didn't and do that I just, I just thought about it. You okay. know, when we keep our money separate and yeah. he's like, this is mine and yeah. that's yours and you cover these bills and, and yep. I'll cover these. And, and there's just, there's no unity in that. Right. I, I, I'm a firm believer that what is his is mine and what's mine is his. So I like that. I don't know. Maybe somebody had to hear that. That's an extra bonus. That's an extra bonus. Well, mine hers. Hers is mine. And <laughs> now communication. There's three reasons for divorce. We're gonna focus on the third one: communication. So when you talk about different love language and things, that I know there's a few ways how you could communicate. I know we're used to it. Can you go over some of the ways that we're used to? And then we're gonna dig deep into the love tank. Okay. So forms of communication, traditional ones, are uh, verbal. There's nonverbal, so again, that's our body language, our facial expressions, that's nonverbal. Um, there's written, writing letters. Um, also, we have oral, but that's still the same as verbal. Um, face-to-face, face-to-face um, is a way of communicating, but another way of communicating is also touch. That's right. There's a deeper communication now, to answer the question there and answer all of our question. there's a deeper communication now that motivates our spouse, and it's called the five love languages. Each person, you can write this down, every person deep down inside, we have this imaginary love tank. Write that down, and we'll talk about the love tank in a second. Each and every one of us inside, we have this imaginary love tank. But talking about the five love languages, I know just in languages alone, there's a barrier, Japanese to Chinese to Spanish, but we all have a primary language. Right. How many in here, your primary language is English? How many your primary language may be Spanish? Okay. How many primary language Spanish? And talking about different languages, it's hard to learn a new language, right. isn't it? Yes. So no, no matter... No matter, okay, so let's give this example. Okay. Okay. Say Robert only speaks Spanish. Okay. 
And I only speak English. That's my primary language. Spanish is his primary language. Right. When he tries to communicate with me, we're very limited in our communication because I'm not understanding what's coming out of his mouth. I don't understand those words. Let, let's, let's prove it right now. Let's prove okay. it. Do you, you speak Spanish, sir, in the orange shirt? Let's prove it right now. How many don't speak Spanish? You don't speak Spanish, Kurt? Okay, no habla ningún español, nada, entiendo un poquito, okay. I want you to say something in Spanish. In español. Yo amo a mi esposa y es lo mejor en el mundo. Can you translate? Something about his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, esposa. He said that he loves his wife and she's the best in the whole wide world. How come Kurt couldn't understand that, sweetie? How because, come Kurt didn't get that? Because Kurt doesn't speak his language. This is what's happening in marriage. We're speaking a different love language. So we can't communicate properly and fights are breaking out, arguments are breaking out, heated discussions are breaking out. What are the five love languages? You can write these down. If you have the book, I know a lot of you guys are, how many took the love test this week? I'm sorry, how many took that? How many took the love test? Okay. I encourage you guys later on, if you haven't taken the love language test, take it. The information you're going to get today, you already get a lot of info, but the way you're going to get the fullness of it, you got to take the love test so you know which one is your wife's or your, or your husband's. But what are the five love languages? Okay, so they are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. I love that. And we took our test this week, and what were some of our results in the test this week? Okay, you want me to give your results? I'll yeah, give yeah, your you give, results. You mind, I'll give yours. Okay, so Robert's love language, top two, they came in tied. Nine, is nine. Quality time and physical touch. Quality time and physical touch. I love hanging out with you. If it's just me and you. How many got the same answer, quality time? Anybody get that? Quality time, you, Christine. How many else got that? You got that too? Quality time, physical touch. I love physical touch. How many guys got physical touch? Is that, is that like a guy thing too? Or? All of them. How many ladies got physical touch <laughs> as number one? Wow, a lot of people. Veronica, her number, her, her top two, and they were pretty much tied as well. Quality time as well, and acts of service. Veronica, she scored a zero on receiving gifts. <laughs> I don't have to buy her any gifts. <laughs> she, I mean, not even a one, oh, zero, settle, settle, nada. I still got to buy her gifts. You're right, Selene. I'll buy you, I'll buy you some flowers. I'll, you. I'll do that. <laughs> we have different love languages. And now that we've identified our love language, I've identified yours, identified mine. Like I said now, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a love tank that we're going to fill here in a moment. But that word, the tank being full, I, li I like what you said there, keeping the tank full. Keep the like? love tank full. And he, he, he said he really likes that word, full. Okay, he loves, he loves a full tank of gas. He loves a full stomach. He loves a full bank account and a full life. And more than likely, you enjoy full too, right? right. You enjoy those areas of your life. You enjoy them to be full. So now the question is, we have this imaginary love tank, and that's why you got to take the test to figure out what's your spouse's love language. Because now, how do you fill the love tank? And we got this up here. Some of us are either on full, some of us are on empty, and we're going to make sure by the end of today, we're going to fill it up even before we leave today because Jesus is in the house today. His healing power is here, but we could be on empty, we could be on full, but how do we fill, how do we fill the love tank? By speaking Robert's primary love language. That's how I will fill his love tank. And how do I fill Veronica's love tank? By speaking her love language. Let's show them. Let's practice it for a second. So we got the wife. Oh, you got the wife over here. Oh, they switched it around. All right, I like that. I like change. They switched it around from last service. All right. So now I have my substance here. Oh, my gosh. What was yours again? I forgot what yours was. <laughs> you better learn it. Quality learn it time quick. and acts of service. I forgot. I'm still working on it. 
You talk about acts of service. They were at the conference all weekend, so I, I didn't get home until about 4.30, and I text her, hey, what time are you getting home? And she says, I'm getting home at 6. I had an hour and a half to clean the house. <laughs> I got home yesterday. My, my son and his friend are in the pool. My dad lives with me now. He was gone. He was getting dinner or something. And we have a little small dog. I walk in and she's running around the house, the whole house. And she, she, she did a number around the house. I'll just leave it like that. I said, oh my gosh, I got an hour and a half to clean this thing because I know when she gets home, she's gonna go mad. <laughs> but I, 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 I went through the house and I started to clean it. That's acts of service. So what I did was I went over, she didn't know I was cleaning the house. You got home around six o'clock. How did the house look when you got home? Amazing. Were the dishes washed? Yes, dishes were dishes washed. Were washed. And yeah, guys could wash dishes too. I just, <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you. Where are my fellas at to wash dishes? Keep it up. All right, Keep it up, yeah. Kevin. I'll do whatever it takes because I don't want that tank to be empty. Now, this is a little crazy. Should I say it? I think we said a little bit at 9 o'clock. What happens if I don't fill her tank? Now, she ain't going nowhere else. She's my baby. <laughs> She's my wife. I fill her tank. Ain't nobody gonna fill my wife's tank. Dangerous. Ah, this whole thing about filling the tanks. Ah, oh, taking the test. I gotta know what her love language is because I don't feel that the enemy has people to fill her tank. Little guy at work trying to flirt with your wife. Man, I'm about to marry you. I'm just saying. Okay, my turn to Okay, go ahead. Tank. Sorry, sorry. I had to say that. Okay. okay there's so. some tanks. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting crazy. Sorry, go. Okay. Fill my tank, baby. Fill my so, tank. So, I am a very, um, I guess, regimented person. So, I wake up in the morning. I um, take care of the stuff that needs to get done around the house before the kids go off to school. I take my daughter to school. I drop her off. And then I usually get to the gym by 8 o'clock. So, what I'm going to do is on Monday, since that's your day off, I'm going to skip the gym. Hallelujah. And I'm going to uh, go to breakfast with you and hang out with you for a solid four hours. Because then the, kid, then the kids get out of school, then we have to pick them up, and you know, then it goes crazy. So. Where do I like to go to breakfast? You'll take me to my favorite spot? Yes, we'll go to K's. Oh, man. They got the country fried steak and eggs. <laughs> oh, wait. Hami's never been to K's in you. Highland. Where have you been? Okay, I'm filling your tank because we went to breakfast. We spent some time together. Wait a minute. I like quality time, but hold on a second. You, you like skipping a few. I scored a nine and a nine. It was, it was a tie. They were at a dead tie. I love yes. quality time, but I love physical touch. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead. When we go to breakfast, I will hold your oh, hand. Sing singles. Oh, you're going to do what? I'm going to hold your hand. Hey, that's a start, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take a holding of a hand. Give me that. I'll take that. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> she still makes my knees buckle. Will I get a kiss tomorrow too? Yes, I'll give you a kiss. Now, now we, hold on, you're going too fast now. You're going too fast. This is, my, this is mine, right? I thought about it last night. Where am I getting my substance? It just magically appeared. Where are you getting your substance? Oh, you got somebody higher. You got somebody higher than me. Sure do. And what's his name? Jesus. Oh. So it's kind of like a full circle thing going on here. Mm -hmm. I spend my time with Jesus. 
Let's be honest, we're going to have some bad days. A lot of bad days. Some days that I'm tired. There's going to be days, come on, let's be honest. She's going to come home, she's beat, whatever, she had a bad day. She ain't going to fill my tank. <laughs> so what's going to happen now, Frank, don't fill my tank? I go to God every day. She's not my full substance. Jesus Christ is my full substance. He's my everything. So Veronica has a bad day. Okay, that's cool. I got Jesus. Jesus fills my tank every day. I go to Jesus, man. He feel, I hang out with God. We pray in the morning. We read the Bible. I go to Power of 12 on Thursday with my guys, and we fill each other up. So when she has a bad day, which we're going to have a lot of bad days, she's not even going to tap her on my, my tank. But I go to Jesus. Right. Now, this is, the most, this is the most mature level you and I could get to. Singles, that's why you don't need nobody to fill your tank right now. Jesus fills your tank. Right. It's not a man or a woman that's going to fill your tank. Jesus fills our tank. And I want to say something. I want to be, man, I like to be so, I want to be as sensitive as I can. And my father, I just thought about him. And if you lost someone, mm -hmm. now you're in this series right now. You lost a husband. You lost a wife. And, and this is cool. We're in a good, good meeting. But you lost a spouse recently. I just had a lady, that's what brought up to my attention, um, Stone King. Mm -hmm. She helped us basically start the church. Lorraine Stone King, she's, she was with us 15 years ago at the Rudy Hernandez. She just lost her, her husband, married for years. If you lost a spouse, you still have tanks to fill. Right. My dad right now, he has tanks to fill. He's living with me right now. He's probably watching us at the Arrowhead campus. Can everybody rave at the Arrowhead campus right now? They're right there with us. What's up, Pastor Joe and the whole team over there? My dad. He still has tanks to fill. Who's he filling? He's filling the kids. He's filling me every day. You lost a spouse, you got grandkids, and you got nephews, and you got nieces, and you got a community, and you got a church, and you have brothers, and you have sisters. How many know that we got, we got tanks to fill all around us? And can you give it up to the, to the ones that maybe lost their spouse or the widows in the house? You got tanks to fill. Your job is not even near done. You're going you're gonna to be one of the mothers of the church. You're going to be one of the fathers in the church. You, you have wisdom that we don't have, and we need you. We need your filling as well. But only Jesus can fill the tank. What does Romans 5, 5 say, sweetie? It says, we'll and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. With his love. Psalms 119, 64 says this, O Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. God's love is going to fill us. I want to read a story for the ones you've already read the book. I want to direct your attention. If you haven't read it, it's a really cool story that I, not only are we here to fill our spouses, cups, and people, community, family, and friends. This week, I'm going to take the test um, with my children. Like, again, I have a teenage daughter. Noah is now, what, 10? And our kids have a love language. And if you read the book, I, I just want to direct your attention to the story about Ashley. It's a teenager. Because we have kids at home, and we got to make sure we're filling their tanks as well. Look at Ashley for a moment, you guys. I remember Ashley, who at 13 years of age, she was being treated for a sexually transmitted disease. Her parents were crushed. They were angry at Ashley. They were upset with the school, which they blamed for teaching her about sex. Why would she do this, they asked. But in my conversation with Ashley, she told me of her parents' divorce when she was six years old. I thought my father left because he didn't love me, she said. And when my mother remarried, when I was 10, I felt she now had someone to love her, but I still had nobody to love me. I wanted so much to be loved, Ashley said. I met this boy at school. He was a little older than me. I liked him. I couldn't believe it. He was kind to me. And in a little while, I really fell in love with him. I didn't want to have sex, but I wanted just to be loved. See, Ashley's love tank had been empty for many years. Her mother and stepfather had provided her physical needs, awesome, but had not realized the deep emotional struggle raging inside of her. They certainly loved Ashley, and they thought that she loved or she felt their love. Not until it was almost too late did they discover they were not speaking Ashley's 
primary love language. If you have a teenager and you have a child, we got to learn their love language as well. It doesn't stop just with me and her. It doesn't stop with a coworker. It doesn't stop with, a, with my boss, my kids. What is, what is their love language? Is my daughter needing some attention, some primary, some, 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 some quality time right now? What is my daughter acts of service? How can I get involved in her life? Because how many of the enemy, again, he's after our marriage to get to the real prize. He's after our children. And today, I don't know where you're at. We're going to come to a close here in a few minutes. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know where your marriage is at. Maybe right now you're struggling and you're facing a hard time right now. We, we do this, I think we've done it now for like the last four, three or four years, this marriage conference, maybe more. And, um, you know, it'll come up. People will say, Pastor, I'm just, I'm just doing this. But after this, we're still separated. We're still divorcing. Um, we've already made up our mind. I just, I'm waiting until the kids get older. I'm waiting until the kids um, get out of high school. And then we're separated. I'm just waiting for the kids. And, I, and I've heard those things. And I just, would you allow God? To heal you for a second. Maybe there was infidelity. Maybe your spouse lied, your husband did this, your wife did this, or whatever it is. We prayed for a healing over your marriage. We're gonna pray for the marriages again in singles. You talk about the boundaries. God's gonna send you a person. And one, one of the ladies asked the nine o'clock service, she said, Hey, is it okay for a girl to chase a guy? And we told her, Absolutely not. For the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 22, when a man finds a wife, he finds something good. It shows that the Lord is pleased with him. So singles, you hold off. Your days are coming. All you got to do now is worry about your relationship with Jesus and everything else will fall into place. Everything's going to fall into place. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that this message was a blessing to you and it really touched your life. Remember, we love you. We are here for you. Contact us anytime. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with your friends and relatives. I am sure they would be blessed just like you were. See you next time. Remember this, if God is for you, there's no one that could come against you.